guys, it's Miriam with the music segment, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the history of hip-hop music. So let's get started. Hip-hop music was first developed in the late 1970s, and not many people knew about it back then. It was created in some of the pu poorest areas in New York City by African-American and Latino teenagers as a part of their hobbies in their free time. So some of the things that were also made and produced at the same time, like kind of in like the same, with the same um, intention was breakdancing and graffiti art. They would play disco tracks nonstop and sometimes ask a friend to be their MC. The MC would introduce the DJ and encourage everyone to dance and have a good time. Some MCs tried to be more entertaining by ta taking time and talking in the beat and um, creating rhymes. And by doing that, they invented rapping. As rapping became more popular, DJ and MCs duos, duos became, began to form and the competition grew. In mid 80s, rappers like LL Cool, cool J became uh, began creating hip hop singles with catchy melodic hooks and people started listening to it for entertainment. In 1987, New York duo Eric B and Rakim released their album P Paid in Full, one of hip hop's finest albums, on which Rakim raps over Eric B's sample beats. If you don't know Rakim, I'm disappointed. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But Rakim is, he kind of like invented flow as we know it. And every rapper, I think in my opinion, every rapper who is, who has skill is like, they, they their talent came from Rakim. <laughs> in the late 80s, a new style of political hip hop developed when groups like Public Enemy began to demand political change and an end to injustice and racism. So clearly, um, a political rap still didn't end today because um, Public Enemy, they were trying to end injustice and racism, which is still here today. So later on in New York, the Wu-Tang Clan created one of the first hardcore styles when they rapped about gangster life over swinging hip-hop beats with samples from martial art movies. Other famous hardcore rappers that you might know include the Notorious B.I.G., Jay-Z, and Nas. Definitely all three are in like my at least top 20. NWA were a group from Compton. You probably heard of them. Um, one of their songs is Straight Out of Compton. They're, they came from one of LA's poorest and most violent areas, and they rapped about the injustice and police violence in their neighborhood. Many of their raps are considered angry and um, violent. And it got a lot of media attention. And to this day, um, one of their songs earlier this year was the, it was just played over and over. In the 1990s, most major artists were from New York and LA, but now more um, artists from the South and mid Midwest are joining the hip hop family. You might know T.I., Lil Wayne, Flo Rida. They're all from the South. And some from the Midwest are like Eminem and Kanye West. And I think though rap has changed over the years, I personally think rap nowadays will never compare to rap in the olden, in the like golden age of hip hop, which is like, I'd say 80s, 90s. 
but thanks for watching do your research get your own top 10 favorite rappers and see if you like modern rap more or um old school rap thank you Do you like the How to Train Your Dragon movies? I do. They're my favourites. But did you know that the movies are based on a series of books? Well, today I'm going to tell you all about them. It's a series of 12 books. There are three movies and some series on TV. The books are written by Cressia Cowell. The books are similar to the movies. But there are also lots of differences. For instance, Toothless is the main character's dragon. In the movies he is big, but in the books he is really small. I really enjoyed these books because they are really adventurous and heroic. The stories are about a young Viking called Hiccup Horrendous Haddock the Third. Vikings are known for being tough and fearless. But Hiccup and his friend fish legs are the complete opposite of all that. Hiccup is the chief son and the heir. The stories begin with him in Viking school where he finds his dragon toothless. Each book is its own adventure, but across all the books he is trying to find five lost things from his great great grandfather Grimbid the Ghastly. The person that collects all the lost things can become the new king of um, king and bring all the tribes together. I would highly recommend um, this series of books to people in grade two to five who like chapter books that are full of adventure and a little bit funny. The Lower School Library and the Qatar National Library has these books. Thank you for watching. Bye. Hey, do you want to hear some jokes? Okay. Why did Superman sit on the school roof? Because he wanted to get to high school. What school's sport is Green Lantern the best at? Boxing. All his power is in the ring. Why did Robin ask Batman to join the school choir? To perform a dynamic duet. Why is Catwoman afraid? Why did Catwoman never use a computer? If you want to find an answer, you can find this book at LS Library. This book is called DC Superhero School Jokes. Why did I recommend this book? I recommend this book because it um, because superheroes are really cool and when um, you add superheroes and jokes together, it's even cooler. Why did I choose superheroes? I chose superheroes because superheroes are a fun fairy tale. Gotta go. Bye.
Welcome to Comic Book Trivia, your gateway to the wonderful world of comics. My name's Amira, and I'll be your host today, and we'll, today we'll be talking about upcoming superhero movies. First, we have Morbius, Marvel's very own vampire, and this movie is releasing on March 9th, 2021. Then we have The Delayed Black Widow, releasing May 7th, 2021. And then we have... Uh, the Eternals, scheduled for November 5th, 2021. And then we have Spider-Man 3 for December 17th, 2021. Black Adam will also be released in 2021, but the date hasn't been determined yet. And this movie is one that I've been personally looking forward to. Then we have Thor Love and Thunder and The Batman in the beginning of 2022. Both movies I am personally really excited for. Then we have Captain Marvel, which will also be the debut movie for Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan, uh, scheduled for July 22nd, 2022. We also have the sequel to the wonderful and critically acclaimed Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, scheduled for October 7th, 2022. Then we have the Flash movie, which will feature an adaptation of the comic book storyline Flashpoint, which was also previously mentioned in other comic book trivias. This movie will be released on November 4th, 2022. And thank you for watching comic book trivia, and have a great weekend. and welcome to Fun Facts. This week in Fun Facts, we're going to learn about music. The first fact is, Rod Stewart held the largest free concert in 1993 in Brazil, in which an estimated of 4.2 million people attended. Eminem's song, Rap God, had the most words in a song. At 1,560 words. Your heart rate adapts to the music that you listen to. The faster the music is, the higher your heart beat. The music you listen to and your memories are stored in different parts of the brain. That is why people with Alzheimer's disease can remember songs and melodies. Flowers and plants grow faster in a musical environment. Thank you everyone for joining us for this week's look at fun facts. I hope to see you all next week.